This is part 21 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to call and consume a REST API from ASP.NET Core Blazor application. In our previous videos in this series, we've built this Employees API Controller. This REST API service retrieves and stores employees from a SQL Server database. And here is our API in action. Notice at the moment in the database, we've got five employees. And here is our Blazor web application. The employee list component is still displaying the hard-coded list of employees. Now, what we want to do is from this Blazor web application, we want to call and consume this REST API service. In the Blazor web project, in the pages folder, we have employee list component right here. Now, can this employee list component call the REST API directly? Yes. A Blazor component can directly call a REST API. However, for separation of concerns and to keep this component code clean, let's actually create a separate service that's going to call the REST API service. So to our Blazor web project, let's add a new folder. Name it services. To this folder, let's add a new interface first. Let's call this interface iEmployee Service. Make the interface public. And for now, this interface is going to contain just one method. Let's call it getEmployees. This method is going to return the list of employees. So the return type of this method is going to be task of i enumerable of employee objects. Bring in the required namespace. We know this employee model class is present in employee management dot models namespace. Our obvious next step is to provide the implementation for this I employee service. So let's add another new class file to the services folder. Name it employee service. The first thing that we want to naturally do here is make this employee service class implement I employee service interface. Now, what is the responsibility of this employee service? Well, it needs to call the REST API service. For that, we're going to use the .NET built-in service HTTP client. We're going to bring that HTTP client service into this class using dependency injection. So let's bring in a constructor. The service that we want to inject is HTTP client. This class is in a different namespace, system.net.http. So let's bring that namespace in and call the parameter HTTP client. And let's also generate the required private field by pressing control period. This is standard dependency injection. At runtime, ASP.NET Core dependency injection container will inject an instance of this HTTP client class into this employee service. But for this to happen, we will have to register HTTP client service with the ASP.NET Core dependency injection container. We do that in configure services method of the startup class. Notice this configure services method is already adding razor pages and server side blazor services. Along the same lines, we also need to add HTTP client services. So on this I service collection instance, we have add HTTP client method. As the name implies, this method adds the required HTTP client services to the dependency injection container. Using the generic parameters of this method, I'm going to add this employee service and its corresponding interface to the dependency injection container as well. So first, we specify the interface, I employee service, and we obviously need to bring in the required namespace. And the implementation class is employee service. Now, it is this employee service that we are going to use to call the REST API using the HTTP client service. And we know our REST API is available at this base address, localhost colon 44379. So we have to specify this base address as well where our API is available. So for that, to this add HTTP client method, I'm going to pass a lambda. Let's call the parameter client. Notice from the IntelliSense, this parameter is of type HTTP client. So on this, we have base address property using which we specify the URI at which our API is available. Now, here's the important bit. This piece of code adds both the .NET HTTP client services 
as well as our own service that is this employee service to the dependency injection container. Now from our employee service get employees method we want to call the REST API and retrieve the list of all employees. Now there are several ways to do this but to make things a bit easier for us I'm going to install a new NuGet package. So right click on the dependencies folder and select manage NuGet packages. Click on the browse tab and make sure this checkbox include pre-release is checked and this is the package that we want to install Microsoft ASP.NET Core Blazor HTTP client. Let's install this. There we go. Installation complete and from this get employees method we want to use this injected HTTP client service and call our REST API. So let's return await HTTP client dot on this we have get json async method and this is going to return an array of employee objects. This get json async method is in a different namespace Microsoft ASP.NET Core components. Let's bring that in and to this method we need to specify the endpoint at which we have the list of employees available and that endpoint is this API slash employees. So let's copy this and specify it right here. So this will be appended to the base URI and we have that base URI already specified within configure services method right here. We still have a red squiggly that's because we are using the await keyword here but forgot to convert this to async. All that is left right now to do is inject and consume this iEmployee service from our employee list component. To inject a service into a Blazor component, we use inject attribute. At this point, you might be wondering, can't we use a constructor to inject a dependency just like how we have done it within this employee service class to inject this HTTP client dependency? Well, we can't. That's one primary difference between a service class and a Blazor component. Within a service class, we can use the constructor, but within a Blazor component, we have to use the inject attribute. We cannot use the constructor. And the service that we want to inject here is iEmployee service. Let's bring in the required namespace. And let's call this property employee service. Next within this component lifecycle method on initialized async let's use this injected employee service call get employees method we know it returns the list of employees so let's use this list to initialize this public property employees this is the property our component binds to to display the list of employees. So with this piece of code in place, we can now safely delete this private method load employees where we have the hard coded list of employees. With all these changes in place, let's run our project. There we go. We now have the employees coming from the database. Our API is returning five employees and we see those five employees here within our Blazor application. Let's quickly review the steps to call a REST API from a Blazor application. First, create a separate service to call the REST API. We can also call the REST API directly from the component itself, but for separation of concerns and to keep the component code clean, it's always a good practice to create a separate service to call the REST API. Step 2. Install this NuGet package within the Blazor Web application. It makes calling and consuming REST API endpoints easier. Next, register the HTTP client services. We do this in configure services method of the startup class. Finally, inject the service into the Blazor component where you need employee data. Remember, it is the inject attribute that we use to inject a dependency into a Blazor component, not the constructor. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.